All right, so we're at Sonoma Raceway, and a usual guest here with a channel, John Edwards, now on his third team, I want to say, since we've started seeing each other. Probably, yeah. I've got, uh, well, I've got two this year, so I guess it's, uh, yeah, my third overall, because I was with Ray Hall for 10 years, and then I was at Turner for a couple of races this year, and then obviously, you know, here with SDR for yep. the full season at SRO. And you're the professional motorsport driver for BMW Motorsport, so I guess we got to say is, how did you get involved with Turner and then show up here with STR? Yeah, well, I, you know, obviously in customer support, um, racing, they buy the car from BMW, they have a partnership with BMW, BMW helps them run the car, you know, in terms of data support and things like that. Um, but they also provide drivers if they want them. Um, so there's sometimes where, you know, like last year, STR ran a, a, an AM-AM lineup. Right. Um, and so they didn't have any pro drivers in the team. Um, but SCR is a team that's kind of been moving up. They started in GT4s, went to GT3s um, with, with AM lineups, and now they're in GT3s with the Pro-Am lineup. So they wanted to take that next step this year, you know, hired some new people. We have a, a new engineer um, and, and some good organization, and so they wanted to, you know, make that next step into a more challenging class, and the Pro-Am class. For whatever reason, you were available. Somehow I was available, and uh, yeah, it's exciting for me because it's, it's uh, you know, a change of pace. Um, you know, I'm, I'm coming in with kind of the experience role versus just being the pro driver, pair with the pro driver that, you know, needs to jump in and go. It's um, it's a more, more of a leadership role, I would say, trying to, you know, steer the direction of the car, trying to, you know, work with, with Sam to, you know, when we go when we go places and work on, uh, you know, on driving stuff as well. So um, it's definitely a different role for me, but it's exciting because, you know, I've been in, I've been in IMSA for a long time. I love the racing there, um, you know, I love the competition, but... It's it's different. We've got a different tire here. We've got um, different tracks than, than I'm used to. So yep. while we'll go to a few places I've been, you know, I've never never been to Sonoma in my life. I guess that was the question we had. Um, like, yeah, the first time racing was testing. I think maybe. Yeah, last, last week we tested it. Last week, right? Yeah, last last week we tested was my first test with the team. My first time to Sonoma, and, um, and then here we we showed up to race. So it's kind of when I tell people they're they're surprised because I've been around for so long and. You know, but I've just been doing IMSA for so long. That, it's never uh, come here. Yeah, they've never come here. In my my junior Formula Car days in the U.S., we never we never came here. We always went to Monterey instead. So, you know, I've just never never had the chance. But it's a really cool track. I I do wish they had paved it because uh, similar to Watkins Glen, for, you know, before the paving, I I'd always said Watkins Glen would be my favorite track if they repaved it. And they repaved it, and sure enough, it's my favorite track. So I wish they'd repaved this place. But the the design of the track using the elevation. The way that um, the way that they they carve corners in, where you go over a blind press and have to know what's on the other side, or you hit hit a big compression, you can ship the car in with a lot more speed to use the compression. Those are the types of things I really like. You know, that's the reason that that I love the north side, for example. You know, through the mountains, there's all these blind corners and compressions that you can use to your advantage. So um, similar similar theme here in Sonoma. Right. So you haven't been here before. So how do you sort of prepare? For racing, Let's go out and do it, or do some sim racing type stuff. Um, yeah, I, I pretty much go out and do it. I mean, I think watching videos is a is a useful way to just kind of know where you're going. But to be honest, I showed up for the test, and I wasn't sure which layout we were running. So yeah. um, we had to drive around in the rental car, you know, and say, okay, you know, taking a right here. So I have driven this track uh, on on a professional simulator before um, in, in a in a you know half day thing that I did. So I got to kind of see the track from a sim perspective and, and know which way was right and left, but it's definitely different when you come in real life. Yeah, because I think, well, obviously, I'm not doing professional sim stuff, but like Ford's and Motorsport, things like sure. that, you don't get that sensation of the elevation change that you would actually being on the track. Yeah, definitely, and, and what I find, you know, in sim racing is that the the physics are, are close and that um, when you get into a dip and the car suddenly will grip up and have more, more rotation, um, so you can use it in the same way, but it's hard to get that sensation if you're learning it for the first time on the sim. Whereas when you drive the track and you know that's there and you know what you're looking for, you can go drive the sim actually even a little better. So it kind of goes goes the other direction as well. You know, if you know the track and you jump on the sim and you know how to take advantage, um, you know, Sebring's a great example because in the sim it looks flat through most of the corners, the whole track in, really. In Florida. Yeah, but well, it's bumpy. It's, yeah. But 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 in terms of the camber. In terms of the camber and everything, and little rises and stuff like that, you think the track's dead flat. And when you drive it in real life, you learn, you know, it's off camber here and it's 
and then it and then it changes. You know, there's a crown in the middle of the road, so you have to turn a little bit early here. And on the sim, you can't really see that, but if you know it's there, you can turn a little early and find that extra grip, like in turn 13 at Seabrick, for example. Yeah. So um, those those things, you know, I definitely definitely go both ways between reality and sim racing. Yeah. So I, I like years ago they had M track days. The first one that rode it then, and then I did Forza Motorsport. I didn't know what configuration was right. And then going basically to what, 12, the blinds and in the lot turn, you don't get that sensation in the racing game at all. Yeah. You take it real life. It's just like it's a big oh, hell. Shit. It's a big hell. Yeah. It's totally blind that you come down surprise. Yeah. Yeah, it's really easy if you don't know, you know, what to look for for references going over the bridge and when to when to start your turn. I mean, you have to start turning before you get there because otherwise you'll end up basically either in the grass or the pit lane for the support paddock. So yeah. it's definitely a definitely a good one. The biggest, the best story I heard for that was somebody got mixed up uh, at Road America. There used to be a bridge going over turn uh, 13, mm -hmm. uh, the Billy Mitchell Bridge, and they they said, you know, it's you can stay flat till. Uh, till the bridge basically was the reference that somebody told this guy. So he went out on the first lap, got to turn six and saw the bridge and said, Well, I stay flat till the bridge. And then he crested over the, and so over nice. the hill, and it turns out it wasn't flat till the bridge in yeah. that corner. So he mixed up the two bridges. So well, always yeah, keep in mind, bridge. always keep in mind to know exactly where, where each bridge is. So, yeah, the follow up question is All right, is there more than one bridge? That's at, what asking, right? at Road America, there was, but, but now they now they took it out. So but now now that's true. But yeah. back then it wasn't exactly. On the on the flip side, though, I did a track walk. We had a, a test day in the, at Barcelona, um, and then we did a, a track walk at, in the evening of the first test day, and um, we got to turn. I guess it's four, um, the famous you know famous corner where Hamilton and Rosberg got together. And there's a bridge there, and in Formula Renault, we were all using. You know, they said, "Oh, what's your braking reference?" And, there's no markers, so everybody says, "Oh yeah, kind of around the bridge." You know, I get close to the bridge and I have a reference of where I where I get to it. And uh, I was teammates with Sebastian Boimi, and they said, "Okay, you know, Sebastian, where you break?" And I guess the bridge, obviously. And he was standing there, and he looked up, and he looked at all of us, and he said, "You know, it's the first time I've seen this bridge." <laughs> he had been driving the entire day around Barcelona and had no idea there was a bridge going across it. So I guess his eyes were down on down on the track somewhere. All right, so I guess we'll basically wrap up. So you all have a new role coming up in August, so congratulations. You're Thank taking you. your first child. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're expecting a daughter in, in August, so very exciting times. Yeah, so exciting times. Again, thanks for your time, as always, John. So we'll see you somewhere soon, I guess. Sounds great. Thanks very much.